with Shirley Adams for the Sewing Connection, Series 15, Program 3. In one of my favorite Fifth Avenue shops in New York, I became aware of these two women who were obviously twins, and they seemed to wander into every department where I was looking at pretty clothing. I kept overhearing one tell the other time after time, you're looking at the wrong size. It's too big for us. Well, finally, the second one turned to her sister in disgust and said, well, I grew. You gonna sue? Well, that tickled me because it happens to us all. And what do you do with all those tight clothes in your closet? Well, for one thing, if you anticipate any growth, think about what you're going to make because I certainly don't want to have something um, right away too tight. So I would like to be kind of prepared for it maybe if it's imminent, if you can't help it, if it's going to happen. Uh, what I also think you ought to do is uh, maybe put in your wardrobe some things that are kind of like this tunic I'm wearing, this jacket. Just loose, and what's really flattering, if you have a little bit more weight on than you would like to have, is soft fabrics that flow. Don't have anything that's too crisp because it's, it's just too stiff and it makes you look bigger. If anything's clingy, it certainly makes you look bigger. But something that just flows and moves nicely, that's always going to be flattering, and especially when it has extra room and uh, it can move nicely. If it should move and doesn't because it's too tight, then it really makes you look larger. Something else you need to think about is if you do need to increase, where can you increase? Well, uh, here I have made this last series, uh, but it was a turtleneck sweater that I cut up and made into this jacket, and it was too small for a jacket. I wanted it larger. So here I've just added some of the same color, but in some suede uh, panels at the side seam here. You can always do things like that, and as long as it looks like it's part of it, like it doesn't look like you grew, then it's just fine. Beware also of shiny things. Now this jacket, I could really gain 50 pounds and it would still fit because it's big and roomy. It's meant to be that way. And the jacket looks just fine no matter how the weight fluctuates. But beware of anything in the hip area because if it's shiny, for instance, that skirt that's underneath, that shiny skirt, it shows every bump and bulge. And so if it's going to be shiny, a uh, little tummy will certainly show, as will every Christmas cookie that you ate too much beyond your capacity, it'll show. Whereas with this one, uh, there is no shine. It's a matte fabric, this suede is. So any uh, matte fabrics, no shine, they're always going to be more flattering if you're carrying a little more weight than you want to. Now, sometimes uh, people grow for other reasons. Let's think about, for instance, increasing sizes for maternity clothes. Uh, these are so easy to do because you just take your standard pattern and even uh, if you're pregnant, your bone structure isn't going to change at all. So you'd still wear the same size. And so you would just adjust this to whatever size you are. And after you have it all adjusted so that it's the right size, then let's consider this paper, the fold of the fabric up here. And uh, one way it's easy to turn any pattern that you use into a maternity pattern is just to trace the top part of it here. And I have a front of a bodice. So if I just trace this top part, the neckline, and down the shoulders, and around the arm's eye, up to about here, right about where maybe a notch would be. And if I just trace it this far, and then if I move it over, oh, maybe about this much, hard to speculate. And what I would do if I were you in making maternity clothes, I would go look at the ready to wear first and take a tape measure with you and just see how wide they are because, you know, it's hard to anticipate exactly how much. But then what I would do with the bottom of it is just uh, make a line about here and then I would continue to trace the rest of it here and uh, just probably go down straight, use some a straight edge to do the job more easily, and consider how long you want it to be below your waist. And however long that is, just go ahead and make it down there. And then what we're going to do with this is just take a straight edge, and I'll use this for my straight edge here, and we're just going to, across the top, cut this on the fold also. And across the top, we're going to just draw this straight line and uh, make it come over here to the arm's eye. And then we're going to do the same on the top of it here. And what I've done is create a yoke. And on this yoke, you know, the shoulders still fit just fine. 
but that bottom part where you need it uh, from about up above the bust on down is going to be just a lot of extra room there. You could either pleat it over here and have a front pleat or a couple of pleats or you could gather this whole front but all that excess fabric that you've added here is just very simple to go ahead and use that in one way or another, either gathered or pleated. So that's one good way. Another good way is to create an A-line. I'll just turn this over and let's make an A-line here. And that's not putting a yoke in it, but making it all in one piece. But if you want an A-line, it's probably not a good idea to trace as is and add it all here, because wherever you add fabric, that is exactly where it's going to hang on your body. So if you'd add it all at the side, it would just stick out at the sides and the front would be completely flat and I don't think that's what you want. So you would be wise instead to immediately pivot and give yourself some front space. And I would trace the neckline then up to here at the top and then I would pivot it again. And uh, what that would do and as it hangs on your body it would add some right at the center. It would add some right uh, next to it. So you'd have it just where you want it. And then I'd go ahead and, and trace it around here and then a straight edge all the way down. And notice when something like this happens that it's not going to be a straight hemline. Anytime there's an A-line, then you always have a curve down here because when that's hanging on your body, it will hang straight even though it's a curve when it's in the flat. So think about these things and that's a good way to increase. Another good way where I've always allowed for increase if necessary is a lot of family weddings I've done and all those bridesmaids. Many times when there's a family wedding, I have never even met the bridesmaids. I don't know them and I won't see them until the rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding, uh, at which time I do take my machine because if I need to make last minute alterations, I can handle that. But what I have always done is completely finish the front of that bridesmaid's dress. I give them a set of measurements that I want them to take and I always threaten them. I always say, I want you to stand normally, breathe normally and give me your honest measurements and then after you give them to me, between now and the wedding, you can't change size anticipating the fact that they probably will. And if anything, they'll probably get a little larger. Well, for that reason, I completely finish the front, finish the facing and so on, completely finish the back with its facing and so on, and then I make big side seams so that I can just real quickly let those side seams in or out as need be. I can't believe this, but all the bridesmaids I've done, I have never had to let them out. Maybe it's just like walking in the rain. If you have an umbrella, it's not going to rain. So maybe it's because I take my machine and I'm prepared for it. I've never had to. But it's something to anticipate anyway so that you won't have any rude awakenings. If you have grown and need to change some things in your closet, uh, keep a file of clippings. Here I just have a few from a magazine or a catalog. And uh, notice these are some kind of good ways to grow. For instance, this blouse, if you just put some panels of some other fabrics that coordinate beautifully, isn't that a nice idea to let something grow when you don't want to let it go? And here's something, opening a sleeve maybe and just putting some little tabs and buttons there if that sleeve got too snug. Or the one down here with lace insets. Wouldn't that be a good idea to make several slashes and put some lace or some other uh, trim in there? So there are always ideas, but when you need an idea quickly, keep a file of those things so that it'll be on hand. Let's go over to the machine, and I'd like to... Uh, uh, show you some other ideas, but first I'd like to show you some things on models that are not my clothes and see what other people have done. Some marvelous things. Here's a really good idea. Now they didn't do it for this reason at all, but it is a thought in case you would need to do something like this. Now this is a collaboration and this is a a really interesting way to work. Mary Troop from Pacific Grove, uh, California does the painting on that wonderful panel that's on the back of this jacket. And uh, so it, actually it's just a painted panel that's really pretty and that's the star of the show there on uh, that jacket. But she is the painter and she has done all this. She paints and dyes the fabric, in fact all the fabric she did. And then she ships all this fabric to uh, Vicki LaForest in Apopka, Florida. And Vicki is the one then who puts it all together. And uh, 
And so she does the sewing. But isn't this interesting? Half all the way across the country, one coast to the other, and they work together. But it's a good idea for making something grow. Put a really pretty, outstanding piece of something in that extra panel. Now here's another one. This is Rosa Park in Williamsburg, Virginia. And she didn't do this for growth reasons either. But why she did it is because she ran out of fabric. So see all those yo-yos where she ran out of fabric? They cover up where she had to put a seam as she had to piece this fabric. Now how about something like that? If you've kept any scraps left over from the fabric, could you do something of this sort and just add some fabric to it? So another idea there. Then we have June Grieg from St. Louis who has done some fun things. Now this is a zipper front sweater and look what she's done with that sweater that did become too small. And so she added to it some woven fabric and then she has some matching pants with it. And that woven fabric there zips up the front and it has some really pretty commercial frogs. And it certainly doesn't look like it's a growth idea. It really looks like it was all planned this way, but it's a wonderful idea and one you might want to use. Now this next one also of June's is something that again uh, is not necessarily a growth idea. She just had a little bit of that fleece, but she knits as well as she sews. And so she decided to add all that red knit to it because knits and wovens go together beautifully. Why not? Here's another one by June. I love this idea. This is a cracked jacket and look how it cracked. If the hips get a little bigger, just cut it in a jagged fashion like that. It looks like an earthquake came through and have, has a split in the land maybe. But a sense of humor is fun. You know, a, a sense of humor will get you there. But she's done that both front and back. And uh, it's very somber, you know, just a little black inset there under the brown leather. But isn't it a pretty idea and one that's really fun? And if anybody asks you about it, say, you just wanted to throw a little joke in it. You don't have to admit that you really grew a little bit. Okay, then we have another one and a couple of vests here. They are by Lois Erickson, and these aren't meant to grow either. But Lois is from Salem, Oregon, and she writes and teaches and does some wonderfully innovative things. And this is a good idea if you just have some great fabric from something that you don't wear anymore, and you would like to get some more use out of it, look at that jigsaw theme that she has front and back of the one vest and just pieces on the other vest with a lot of neat metal pieces then connecting them. This is just a good idea to mix fabrics this way and make something really superb out of it. So uh, are you getting some ideas that maybe you can resurrect something in your closet and use? And then we have a wrap skirt. This is from Donna Salyers in Covington, Kentucky, uh, who does a lot with suede or leathers and furs. And uh, Donna just suggests, how about a wrap skirt? It'll go bigger or smaller very easily. So it's another little growth garment that you might be interested in thinking about. Well, if you want to get some other ideas, I'm doing a few things here. And uh, what I have done is, for instance, if I just had a piece of black fabric or a black garment of some sort, and if it suddenly became too small, here's a good idea for that. Now, if I just add this print, if I don't have any more of the solid black and I have to add something else, if I just add one big strip of this print, it looks maybe a little obvious, especially if you're conscious of the fact that uh, growth things can be done or are being done. But if you do many of these strips and vary the sizes, don't make them regular so they look like uh, you know, unflattering stripes, uh, make them very irregular as I've done here. And uh, some of them might be wider, some narrower, but do a succession of stripes and see if that isn't going to be kind of pretty. What I've done to this to stabilize it because it was very ravelly silk fabric. And so I first of all just fused uh, um, interfacing to the back, a very lightweight, a sheer fusible interfacing, just so that we won't have any raveling. And then it's a matter of pinning this together and doing just a shallow seam here. You don't need much uh, because you don't want to get rid of much maybe in case you need all the black that you can get there. And so anyway, make a seam there and this would be rather pretty. It was kind of like that blouse that you saw in the magazine picture where they had several different kinds of fabric in there. But this would be a really pretty, you'd have something outstanding from just that basic black that you used to have. So maybe it's not only a growth factor, maybe it's also just a rejuvenating your closet or maybe it's making it brand new and putting this in just because it's pretty to do something like that. Well, it's an idea that you might be able to uh, work into your wardrobe. 
Another one is this. I had just a scrap of this fabric left at home from, oh, a blouse that I had some time ago. And uh, with this uh, black fabric and my other fair well here I'll flip this out of the way what I've done with this fabric and what it is is a burnout fabric so that actually the black part of it is very sheer it's a see-through fabric which I really wouldn't want if I would be splitting a skirt or a dress or something I wouldn't want the see-through aspect of it but I would like to have that pretty design that's on there it's orchids actually in brown or taupe on this black fabric black background what you might do is this. First of all, I stabilized it and also made it opaque by putting some uh, interfacing behind it. Then I have here just some of that peel off fusible. And so what I would do is peel off the paper. Now this is just the overlap part. The part that's actually expanding the garment is where I put the interfacing to make it opaque. This is though going to overlap. So I would get all this off. I'll just tear it here. I'd get all of this off, and this I would put up to the edge of the former fabric, the garment itself, and fuse it in place first, because it's going to be a lot easier to sew. And once it's fused in place, actually you by now can't even see that there are two fabrics here probably. It blends together nicely. But what I would do then is uh, maybe not satin stitch the edge, unless you wanted it to be a definite line along here. What I have done is just cut out, not necessarily on the line of the fabric, just cut out somewhere. And maybe you do want to do a satin stitch, maybe you do want to stitch right up to this and not fuse it all the way to the edge. Uh, you're the designer, you do what you like to do about it. With this one, I would possibly just do along the edge of it, maybe a little stipple stitch or something of that sort. I'll just here go back to the menu and uh, put it on what? Ordinary sewing, I just want it on straight. And I want to put the uh, feed dog down. And I'm going to change feet while I'm at it so that I can do some stitching <coughs> in a free motion pattern so that I can go either back and forth or I can uh, go around in any which direction and uh, then do whatever you want. Uh, on this I wouldn't do a decorative stitch because you really don't want that to stand out. You want it to just blend some way. And even though at this point I am doing this in a bright fabric, and I'll put a pin in here since I haven't actually fused it, but once this is fused it will be very easy to stitch over that edge where they join. And so uh, Fusing is good. It's nice that all those great fusibles came on the market. And when you do this fusing, do it with one of the kind of lightweight ones that you can stitch over because some of the heavy duty ones you really can't stitch on and or you really don't want to. So what I would do here is just, uh, okay, it's telling me, do you know you have the feed dog up? And yes, I know that. Okay, or maybe you would just do this in the black thread. Or maybe this is something that would be fun to do in a little metallic. And if you do this in a thread that actually shows up, and I really wouldn't do it in this contrast. I'd do it in either the black or the taupe black, probably. And I have a feeling when you do this all back and forth, you'd secure that edge so it would never ravel, even though there is also fusible there. But I would probably just blend it in since I have all that design. But anyway, you can do this however you please. But it's a good thought. It's an idea and one that you might find useful. Well, another thought uh, is that perhaps uh, if you're going to have to then stitch something else to it, maybe you don't want to do that on both sides. Maybe you would do this right at a seam so that you'd leave the other edge of it straight and just where you split it apart or where the edge of the seam is, make that straight. But I think with black thread instead of the pink, I think that could be very pretty. And maybe something that was completely obsolete is now one of your favorite things. Uh, because it will work out very nicely. Here I just have some extras. Uh, but think about what you might do on some of those. Here's another, a purchased uh, braid or, or trim. And this is another one that you could very easily, let's say that blouse that is uh, buttoning in back, but it's just too small in front. How about just splitting it right down the front so that it's in two pieces? and uh, put a panel of this on each side and uh, put your buttons right down the center here. I've got some buttons and if we just sprinkle those down the center of it, that might be a good idea. So now it looks like 
it does something in front like fastening, but it doesn't actually. But this might be a real pretty idea to put this on each side. I'll just overlap some of that trim that isn't supposed to show. And uh, that might be a real good idea to do this. Let's see, I need another piece of the trim now right here and overlap that also. Or if you want it to look like it really buttons, then go ahead and make a fold in the fabric there before you uh, put the buttons on and then it'll look like it's actually functioning. Now wouldn't that be a good way to just increase the front or take it right over your shoulder and put those stripes down the back as well as the front. Or think about doing this on a skirt and give it the illusion of a wrap skirt maybe. You might uh, bring it straight down the skirt and then when you get down so far, not all the way to the bottom, because very often if you come all the way to the edge and just have that on the edge, maybe it'll look like, oh, look, she had to make that longer or she had to make it wider. Maybe, maybe not. Evaluate it case by case, see what happens. But with this one, you might also do that um, little bit of mitering up here a little higher and bring it across there so you still have some skirt down below. If you would do that, it would give it a wrap skirt look, even if it isn't, even if it's all one piece. So again, something that might be quite useful. There are so many ways you can expand. Or it might be pretty if you just need to lengthen a skirt because maybe it isn't, maybe you're one of the lucky ones who didn't add any pounds as so many of us did. Maybe all you need to do is make it longer because we're seeing a lot longer skirts now. Designers will never again dictate to you. They all took a bath uh, back in the 70s when they said, from the, the real long midi way up to the very short mini, and women said, forget it, we're wearing pants. And a lot of manufacturers actually went out of business at that time. They don't, don't try to dictate to women ever since then. But how about several rows of this to make something longer rather than just adding a border at the bottom? Or here I simply have a wide border of something similar, but it would also be a nice way to increase. Or. Uh, what I have over here is something that's always useful. Suede's in all colors or leathers in all colors. And what I've done with this is you can either do this lengthwise or crosswise. If I would just stitch a piece, and I like these clashy colors, these pinks and oranges and orangey reds together. If you would just sti stitch a piece of it on and then on the back side slash and drop it to the other edge of this piece and stitch that on. And notice I have here again irregular stripes because very often they're prettier than regular ones. So do an assortment of sizes here. And then the next one, the same thing, just after you've stitched it on one edge, slash the fabric, drop it. Here I've gained so far about an inch and a half. And uh, so that might be good sideways or lengthwise. And here I've just stitched this one on. I haven't slashed it yet. But you just slash it up here close and then drop it to the edge of it and put as many of these stripes in as you need to. Now that might be to lengthen a sleeve. This might be a good idea. Any of these ideas might be good for children's clothing also because they grow very fast. And you think, oh, I just made that thing for them a few months ago, and they've barely worn it, and now here it is too small. Well, this would be just great to be able to do the same thing with children's clothes. And I think they would really like that. And if you do something like that for kids, involve them in it. Have them come into your sewing room, into your stash, and pick out the things they would like to have go with it so that they're really happy then when they wear it because they can say to their friends, well, I'm the one who designed this even though mother made it. And that's kind of fun too. So uh, all sorts of ideas here. Or with some of those pretty trims, how about this one? If I just had a dress that came with a little round neckline like this, and I suddenly thought, oh boy, it needs to be bigger in the bust and it's just too tight and it really doesn't look nice. How about just slashing the whole thing and folding under a little bit of it on each side and inserting another trim underneath. Here is a big wide trim. If I would insert this underneath, doesn't that look pretty? Doesn't it look like, well, it's just open. It was meant to be. You'd never dream that was an inset that was an afterthought that had to be. And it looks possibly like you have a little bit of uh, trim in there or maybe it looks like underneath you have a camisole that you're wearing with it but at any rate it certainly could revive and rescue something that's completely uh, out of the out of reason that you can't wear anymore well I have a pair of jeans here and you can see how by how new they are uh, that uh, they haven't been worn very much well I'm thinking how can I resurrect these they were mine yes at one time 
and uh, I wore them very little. <laughs> uh, it looks like I could either put a stripe down the sides maybe and do some fun things that way, or something else I could certainly do is to just admit defeat. There are some things that you're not going to save. Let it go. Just discard it. Give it away to someone who is that size who might like to have it and think, okay, can't do it all and you don't need to do it all. But you know that you do have the ammunition that you can do it whenever you want to. You can make things grow and that's good. I have a friend who's a size 10 and it doesn't matter how she, big she gets, she'll always be a size 10. She doesn't sew, she shops for her clothes, and she shops until she finds something that she can fit into that is a size 10. Now, I like to not even bother with sizes. I like to use that basic patterner where there are only measurements, and you can have every part of your body change however it needs to be, and you don't have to get hung up on what size you are. So, does that sound all right to you? Well, if there are changes in your life, in your size, you can handle it. Just breeze along with a light heart and your humor intact will see you through. Now, if you were making one leather garment, what would it be? Something very serious? A classic that would live forever? Maybe. But since over the past many years, I have made so many, many uh, things in leather, then I'm in the mood to get a little lighthearted about it. So join me next time for Lighthearted Leather.